Speaker. Uh, thank you, and I call Kiva Archibald, Chair of the Economy Committee. Um, I rise to speak as Chair of the, the Committee for the Economy. The Committee held an additional meeting yesterday to discuss the aspects of the Coronavirus Bill relevant to the Department for the Economy. In terms of that bill, the Committee sought to consider Clauses 7 and 8 and the accompanying six, Schedule 6, which look at emergency volunteering leave and the payment for it, as well as conditions around it. Clause 35 and Schedule 15, Part 3, which look at temporary closure of further and higher education institutions, and Clause 36 and Schedule 16, Part 3, which look at temporary continuity directions with respect to further and higher education institutions. Unfortunately, due to losing quorum, the Committee could only agree to a view on Clauses 7 and 8 and the accompanying Schedule 6. The nature of the coronavirus emergency means that the normal timescales and processes around bringing of a legislative consent motion to the Assembly have not been observed. This is far from ideal, as others have um, already acknowledged, and members do have some concerns around this. The Committee has put its concerns on record, and members acknowledge that we live in remarkable times, and the emergency nature of this legislation means that we must accept that this is the way things have to be done. That said, members do consider that the legislation must be subject to review after six months. Clause 7 simply directs to Schedule 6, which makes provisions for the emergency volunteering leave. Clause 8 sets out how payments will be made to emergency volunteers for their loss of earnings and for travel and subsistence. An emergency volunteer will only receive compensation for loss of earnings as an emergency volunteer if they suffer loss of earnings they would not have otherwise suffered. The Committee is aware that regulations will be brought forward regarding how the scheme will operate should provide more, should the, and this should provide more detail. However, members appreciate that this legislation has to retain a degree of flexibility as this is an extremely fluid situation. The Committee's primary concern is that this scheme will work efficiently and effectively and that no volunteers will suffer any detriment and also will be kept safe. The Department of Health here will be, certifying, will be the certifying authority and emergency volunteers are to be deployed only in health and social care settings and contexts. The certificate will be for two, three or four consecutive weeks and these must be within the same volunteering period. This period of 16 weeks will begin on the day when Schedule 6 comes into force. Further periods of 16 weeks can be specified by the Secretary of State or the Department for the Economy. The Secretary of State cannot make regulations for the North on the volunteering period without the consent for the of the Department for the Economy. Any employee taking emergency volunteering leave will retain the benefits of all the normal terms and conditions of their employment, and the volunteer has the right to return to the job that they left prior to volunteering without any loss of seniority. The volunteer will not lose out on any benefits of their employment, including pensions. The Department for the Economy can make relevant regulations, but it can only, rele can only rele regulate where this is within the Assembly's competence and would not require the Secretary of State's consent within an Act of the Assembly. The regulations made by the Department for the Economy will be subject to negative resolution, so a prior annulment can be brought against them. On the basis of this short scrutiny and without time for further clarifications, the Committee for the Economy is content in principle with the aspects of the Bill dealing with emergency volunteering. I would like to just offer some brief um, reflections as, as Sinn Féin spokesperson for Economy. Um, I think that there will be many people out there who may want to offer services as volunteers to, to support the heroic efforts of, of those in the front line in the health service. Um, and therefore, I welcome the, the provisions in the, the clauses um, in, in respect of emergency volunteers to protect workers' rights and to offer some compensation while, while um, volunteers are in that role. There are some good um, examples of registers of volunteers um, in the South, and I, I would maybe ask the Minister if he would uh, reflect on if those types of measures are being considered here as well. Um, in terms of the clauses on, around further and higher education, obviously in respect of Clause 35, Schedule 15, that has mostly been superseded as universities and colleges have already taken the steps um, to protect the health and well-being of staff, students and, and the pu public. Um, obviously, there are many things that still have to be worked out in, in the respect of that, and we are, of course, working to do that. But at this moment in time, um, our number one priority is protecting lives. 
Um, also in respect of the, the continuity plans that are provided for in Clause 36, um, that these should only be undertaken as necessary in consultation with the governing bodies of the institutions and on the basis of expert medical advice to support our vital services. Like others have said, um, normally my reaction would be to oppose many of the measures that are contained within this legislation, but this is an emergency situation and we need an emergency response. And finally, I just want to offer my gratitude to all of those who are battling on the front line um, in the health service and in other services on behalf of us all. And I would implore everyone to take seriously the health advice and the, uh, these measures that are being put in place to protect themselves and their loved ones and all of our loved ones. Gormayogat. Thank you. And I call Christopher Stalford. Mr. Speaker, before I move to my own uh, remarks, I want to place